I once read, the only investment needed to run a business is innovation. And I also read, it all starts from an idea. So these are the two principles around which our video will be based on. Welcome to The Rich Rabbit. Today we'll be talking about the American business magnate and the father of Nike, Phil Knight. But first things first, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do consider doing it. And don't forget to click the bell icon. Phil Knight is the founder and head of Nike Inc., the number one athletic shoes company in the world. Already a legend in the retail and marketing worlds, Knight has turned into something of a mainstream hero, the subject of admiring articles in popular magazines. It is a reputation Knight has earned over the years as both a visionary businessman and a hard-nosed CEO. The man whom the Sporting News named the most powerful person of the year in sports for 1993 was no athlete, coach or even a commissioner. Rather, he was the man who for nearly 30 years has shot the great sports stars as well as the Saturday afternoon jocks, Nike founder and CEO Philip Phil Knight. He is also the owner of the stop-motion film production company Leica. Knight was born in Portland, Oregon on February 24, 1938, the son of William H. and Lola Knight. Oregon's only billionaire forged his go-it-alone philosophy while growing up in Portland. The son of a domineering but loving father who was publisher of the now defunct Oregon Journal. Though too small to excel in contact sports, young Knight took refuge in track. His father refused to give him a summer job at his newspaper because he believed his son should find work on his own. A determined Knight then went to the rival Oregonian where he worked the night shift tabulating sports scores and every morning ran home the full seven miles. That interest in sports, and especially track, gave Knight the impetus to study the way track shoes were being made and marketed in the late 1950s. For assistance, he consulted his coach, the University of Oregon's famed Bill Bowerman, who himself would become a senior member of the Nike team. Together, they determined that American shoes were inferior in style and quality, too heavy and too easily damaged. The Japanese, on the other hand, were experimenting with new, trimmed-down styles fashioned in lightweight, hardy nylon. Knight even wrote his Stanford Business School term paper on the subject. Then, a few years later, he got involved personally by visiting Japan and arranging to import new design running shoes himself. Knight continued his education at the University of Oregon in Eugene, where he's a graduate brother of Phi Gamma Delta fraternity, was a sports reporter for the Oregon Daily Emerald and earned a journalism degree in 1959. As a middle distance runner at UO, his personal best was one mile in 4 minutes and 10 seconds. He also won varsity letters for his track performances in 1957, 58 and 59. In 1977, together with Bowerman and Jeff Hollister, Knight founded an American running team called Athletics West. Before the blue ribbon sports business that would later become Nike flourished, Knight was a certified public accountant, firstly with Coopers and Libran and then Price Waterhouse. Knight then became an accounting professor at Portland State University. Immediately after graduating from the University of Oregon, Knight enlisted in the Army and served one year on active duty and seven years in the Army Reserve. He next enrolled at Stanford Graduate School of Business. There, for his small business class, Knight produced a paper, Can Japanese Sports Shoes Do to German Sports Shoes What Japanese Cameras Did to German Cameras? That essentially premised his eventual foray into selling running shoes. 
he graduated with a master's degree in business administration from Stanford in 1962. Knight set out on a trip around the world after graduation, during which he made a stop in Kobe, Japan in November that year. It was there that he discovered Tiger brand running shoes, manufactured in Kobe by the Onitsuka Corporation. Impressed by the low cost and quality of the shoes, Knight called Mr. Onitsuka who agreed to meet with him. By the end of the meeting, Knight had secured Tiger distribution rights for the Western United States. The first Tiger samples would take more than a year to be shipped to Knight. During that time, he found a job as an accountant in Portland. When Knight finally received the shoe samples, he mailed two pairs to Bowerman at the University of Oregon, hoping to gain both a sale and an influential endorsement. To Knight's surprise, Bowerman not only ordered the Tiger shoes, but also offered to become a partner with Knight and provide product design ideas. The two men agreed to a partnership by handshake on January 25, 1964, the birth date of Blue Ribbon Sports, the company that would later become Nike. Knight's first sales were made out of a now story Green Plymouth Valiant Automobile at track meets across the Pacific Northwest. By 1969, these early sales allowed Knight to leave his accountant job and work full-time for Blue Ribbon Sports. Jeff Johnson, Nike's first employee, suggested calling the firm Nike. It was named after the Greek wing goddess of victory, and Blue Ribbon Sport was later renamed Nike in 1971. Nike's swoosh logo, now considered one of the most powerful logos in the world, was commissioned for just $35 from a graphic design student, Carolyn Davidson, in 1971. According to Nike's website, Knight said at the time, I don't love it, but it will grow on me. In September 1983, Davidson was given an undisclosed amount of Nike stock for her contribution to the company's brand. On the Oprah TV program in 2011, Nike claimed he gave Davidson a few hundred shares when the company went public. At Nike, Knight developed personal relationships with some of the world's most recognizable athletes, including Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods. From the start, Knight's shoes sported their own look, including the distinctive logo that still appears today and their own attitude. An early effort to promote the newly dubbed Nike included a now classic advertisement set at the 1972 Olympic track trials in Eugene, Oregon. The copy boasted that four of the top seven marathoners wore Nikes. As a Time writer pointed out, the ads conveniently neglected to mention that runners wearing Adidas shoes place first, second and third. By the mid-1970s, Nike was at the cutting edge of workout shoe technology. For instance, it was Bowerman who poured some liquid latex into his wife's waffle iron, thereby inventing the famous sole that made the earliest Nikes feel like bedroom slippers. Nike didn't exactly burst from the gate in profit though. Major sports stars demanded major compensation for wearing Knight's brand. A turning point, however, came in the 1980s. This is when tennis star Jimmy Connors won Wimbledon in a pair of Nikes, and John McEnroe hurt his ankle and started wearing an obscure three-quarter Nike model that had sold all of 10,000 pairs that year. Following mainstream success in the late 90s, Will Winton Studios' animation company sought external investors due to rapid growth. This included Knight, who assumed a 15% stake in the company in 1998 and facilitated the employment of his son Travis as an animator. Citing mismanagement, Knight eventually purchased Will Winton Studios and assumed control of the company's board with the corporation of Nike executives. In late 2003, Knight appointed his son to the board 
and after Winton had stepped down, Knight rebranded the company Leica. He then invested $180 million into Leica, and the studio released its first feature film Coraline in stop motion in 2009. Coraline was a financial success, and Knight was then promoted into the roles of Leica CEO and President. In June 2015, Knight and Nike announced that he would step down as the company's chairman, with President and CEO Mark Parker to succeed him. Knight's retirement from the Nike board took effect at the end of June 2016. In September 2017, Knight decided to come out of retirement to put black back in the UNC jerseys for the Phil Knight Classic in Portland, Oregon. Knight's memoir, Shoe Dog, was released on April 26, 2016 by Simon & Schuster. It was rated fifth on the New York Times bestseller list for business books in July 2018. The book details the building of the Nike brand, from importing Japanese shoes to being part of a federal investigation. According to Portland Business Journal, Knight is the most generous philanthropist in Oregon history. His lifetime gifts are not more than $2 billion. Now let's talk about his personal life. Knight met his wife Penelope Parks while he was working at Portland State University, and the pair was married on September 13, 1968. They own a home in La Quinta, California. Knight donated $3.5 million to Republican Newt Bueller during the 2018 Oregon gubernatorial election. Knight's son, Matthew, died in a scuba diving accident in El Salvador in 2004. Another son of Knight's, Travis Knight, runs the Leica Animation Studio. And what better way to end the video than by sharing a wonderful quote by the man himself. If you're following your calling, the fatigue will be easier to bear, the disappointments will be fuel, the highs will be like nothing you've ever felt. We sure hope that you liked the video and found it informative. So please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video.